Welcome back to Plague's Eye Studios, everyone. Ryan here, and on this rig spotlight of the Tone Engineer, I've assembled what one might call the Plexi Pedal Platform. <laughs> Do you like progressive metal, perhaps even movie scores? Eight stream guitars! Then you are bound to enjoy my first EP, Children of the Stars. Performed, programmed, produced, mixed, and approximately mastered by one dork in a spare bedroom, the debut release from the Seedrum Project is a celebration of all melodic instrumental music. With a smaller art budget than McCollywood's Who Killed Captain Alex, this symphonic metal adventure is not afraid to say, f*** it, let's see what that sounds like. Not literally, of course, there, there's no lyrics after all. Get your copy at the link in the video description. There's a common theme among all of my tone tutorial videos, whether it be for amp modeling hardware or VST plugins or even the real deal in this case, in the sense that my idea of a great guitar tone is just take the perfect amplifier platform that you can find and modify it as you see fit, whether it be tweaking a few frequencies in post to cut boomy frequencies and make it sit better in a mix, or if you want to drive the front end and hit the gain stages harder and cut some of the bass frequencies, boost some of the high mids in your guitar to get that heavy metal chunk. That's kind of been my approach, but I have missed out on what I think is a really fun premise, and that is using pedals to make up for those gain stages and kind of turn a single channel amplifier into something that resembles more of a three or four channel amp. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing today with this little pedal board that I've somewhat assembled here. As you can see, nothing's Velcroed down. <laughs> I'll be taking this apart as soon as this video is over, but uh, I've had a lot of fun with this, and this all kind of stemmed from playing with this amplifier's low input, and that's something that I've not really explored much on this channel, but it's been one of my favorite ways to play this amp over the past couple of months depending on what pedals I'm using for the job. So the idea from this video sort of coalesced from two different sources. The first was the last Tone Engineer video where I got some great results with this amp head's high input with a particular drive pedal and I liked it so much that I wanted to do it again in a slightly different way today. But most of the time I'm using the high input of this amp whenever I demo this thing, whether it be for you know boosting a extended range guitar or just general metal tones. I mean, this is a hot rod plexi after all, so it's obviously good at that. But one of the features that I've been really liking over the past couple of weeks is this low input, which sort of resembles your JMP2204, or even a plexi's normal channel. And it's just a great platform to build off of in terms of boosting. So that's exactly what we're gonna be exploring today, driving and unmistakably British sounding amp channel into multiple levels of gain without compromising the bass amplifier tone. And that's an important distinction to make for the rest of this video because as you'll hear, it never stops sounding like a plexi. It's always that Marshall Friedman chariot tone thing, right? Um, but you could absolutely use a clean amplifier and drive it with different distortion pedals. Say if you've got a really flat clean amp channel, you know, you could use something like a Mesa throttle box or a Rev G4 and make it sound like a Mesa boogie head or a Rev head, but that's not the goal. I still want this amp to be unmistakably British in its heritage and just use a pedal platform to make an otherwise one channel amplifier into something that works more like a three or four channel head. I'll be using a few different guitars for these demos. And I think the great thing about this platform in particular is they all retain their own character. You can tell when it's an active versus a passive pickup. You can tell a bridge humbucker apart from a P90 from a single coil especially. So if you're playing in a cover band and you need a wide array of tones, if you have either a single guitar that's that capable or you switch between a few, then you'll get that many more sounds. So that's a great part of this. I'll be primarily leaning on the Fender Modern Player Telecaster on both the neck single coil and the bridge humbucker, though we'll split it a couple times um, for some single coil bridge tones. The higher gain sections will use the Wild Audio 
Blood Eagle, which has EMGs equipped in both the bridge and neck position. And I think I even used the Electra SG clone a couple times for some of the vintage parts. So with that, onto our bedrock of the rig, I guess you could call it, with the Chariotone Gargoyle. This is, of course, part of Chariotone's Hot Rod Plexi series, though we're kind of ignoring the hot rod part for now using the low input, as I mentioned earlier. And frankly, this is really going to be up to you. I use the term plexi loosely because yeah, sure, it'd be great if you had a 59 Super Lead or a 87X reissue or anything like that, but the older and more vintage and more costly the amplifier you use, then I'm the kind of person that would be more inclined to just plug a guitar straight through it and crank the shit out of it. So, um, you know, anything that kind of has this British flavor to it that can replicate the sounds I'll show you, completely acceptable. You know, something like a Marshall Origin would be great. Any of the Marshall reissues, something from Friedman, something from Metro, you name it. Anything that kind of does this sound. I'm specifically using the low sensitivity input on this amp to sort of cop those normal channel plexi tones when you have the preamp volume cranked. And this actually resembles more of like the 2204 era in terms of architecture, but anything in that line is what I'm going for, where it's really touch sensitive. You do a volume roll off, you can get mostly clean, but turn it up, turn to a bridge humbucker and you know slam a power cord and you get some very decent crunch tones. So that's kind of the dynamic range I'm looking for. Uh, in fact, I'll have you listen to what this sounds like with the settings dialed in as such, and we'll talk about those in detail in a moment. First of all, this is a master volume amp, so I may not be hitting the power amp as hard as you would with a classic Plexi. So, you know, you might have to adjust the preamp gain to taste based on that, but I've still got it between about five and six. It's super loud in the room. Um, even for a 50 water, I bypassed all the additional clipping diodes and no depth circuit. Um, the tone stack and presence, the presence I have this set at three, Bass at five, middle at four, and treble at six. So I'm not deviating from noon hardly at all, but those are settings that I kind of came up with based on how I dialed in my pedals. So do expect to kind of have a back and forth pull when you're dialing in everything. Um, this is a fairly no brainer platform though. It is a Marshall style tone stack. They're kind of hard to screw up. The gain section is the critically important stage to me to achieving this sound. And of course, this is not the only way you can go about this. You can dial this in completely clean, but I like this because you're already kind of tickling the red in terms of getting some clipping distortion, natural preamp distortion. And this really takes pedals well, whether you're hitting it with you know solid state components to make it sound more tube-like or just a straight level boost. It reacts really well. But one of the things that allows it to do that is by bypassing the bright switch. And I'm kind of copying an old Plexi mod. People talk about clipping the bright cap. So depending on the year, whatever they had lying around seemingly at the time, you might have a different bright cap and it may not even be on the normal channel. I know a lot of amp modelers show that um, the bright switch is bypassed by default, but um, can't speak for obviously every amp out there. So. Um, I prefer to bypass those bright switches for this kind of setup. It makes the gain much more linear. Um, otherwise, you allow some amount of treble content to trickle through and you might have a very spiky, nasally sound if you back off the gain, whereas it's more fluid and you know overall distorted the higher you dial it up. So anywhere between that 10 to 5,000 picofarad bright switch, or bright cap rather, I prefer to have bypass for this. So Hopefully your amp has a switch on it as well, or you can literally clip it and resolder it later. Uh, but that's a common mod to begin with. So, you know, if you're looking into something like this and you're probably already prepared for that, don't have to do that. But again, it makes stacking pedals a more linear experience. You also have plenty of room for creativity when it comes to the speaker cabinet. 
besides the obvious choices of something like a 4x12 loaded with greenbacks. You can also do like a diagonal or vertical 2x12 if you got a smaller size amp head that'll fit it. Of course, if you're doing this same sort of setup with say an orange head or a vintage high watt, then their accompanying cabinets sound awesome. Really no rules. I'm playing in the room with my Mesa oversized 4x12, but for recordings, it'll be a greenback and vintage V30 blend the 70 watt Marshall spec ones specifically. And um, I think that's just a wonderful blend sound, kind of has a almost cream back style thing. But all of this will ultimately come down to your personal preference. But since I'm shooting for this smoother vintage mid range kind of sound, then definitely those green back, cream back, or even eminence warehouse speaker equivalents is an easy way to get there if you're going after this same setup. Now that said, to our centerpiece of today's show, I would not expect all of you to have all the pedals here, but the same sort of general layout is a quick way to achieve success with this kind of rig. Now, the first thing I would recommend is if you're gonna be using a setup like this live or simply wanna have quick access to your tones, something like this MIDI switcher would definitely be your friend as you can put pedals in loops, turn them on and off individually, or set up scenes, which is the real way to go about it since you don't have to play the pedal dance. So that way you could have, you know, one where you have these two pedals on and one where you only have this pedal on and this pedal on and uh, makes life so much simpler. But um, kind of out of room on this compact board here and I did not feel like programming this for one video <laughs> and some cutaway shots. So um, that would be something I would recommend, especially one that speaks MIDI if you have any other gear that does so, I will be using a digital pedal in, in one of these um, where that could come in handy. But if all you got is, you know, mono analog stuff, then you can kind of get by without that. Uh, second thing to note is this amp does have an effects loop, but I'm not using it. I'm actually putting all the pedals, even modulation and echo pedals in the front of the amp. And I'm doing that because not everyone's going to have an effects loop. And I wanted to do this kind of Eddie Van Halen style and just put it all there. Um, the thing to note about that is not all these pedals play nicely in front of the amp, but the ones I'm using actually sound really good. And that's kind of why I'm a stickler about where to put this gain. I, I want it to break up, but I don't want it to be so distorted that, you know, a delay or a chorus just turns into a garbled mess that you can't tell what it is. So um, the main trick here is that most of our distortion when we're using it goes before all of our chorus modulation kind of stuff. So keep that in mind. If you do have an amp with effects loop, it will make things easier. Um, and personally, I prefer, you know, wet, dry, wet stereo stuff anyway. But for the sake of simplicity, it's literally going to do one of these straight to amp. I have this board broken up into two distinct layers, the bottom row being the aforementioned time-based effects, but the top is where the magic really happens. And this is where we stack different drive stages to get the different channel sounds. So even if you don't replicate this, even if it's not the same sort of pedal, if you'd rather use, you know, a fuzz pedal one spot or something like that, then the general layout will still apply, which is, um, I think, the most valuable part. So let's start with our first pedal which is the Bogner Harlow, my favorite compressor that's not a compressor. And whether or not you're using this pedal or a standard compressor, this goes first, almost without exception. If you're using any other rig that kind of has these high impedance pedals that don't suck your tone, then the compressor needs to go first. I think it was Josh of JHS Pedals that uh, was reading a lot of comments saying how like, oh, your compressors are, uh, they're noisy. I can't believe that you get by with this they were putting compressors after drive pedals and compressors raise noise because they raise the level of everything. They, you know, make everything compressed. So compressor goes first, almost without exception. Though this doesn't use traditional compressor components, it still has a very similar effect through a Rupert Neve designed transformer, which I think has a cooler effect for guitar. It kind of sounds like an exciter limiter kind of thing more than squashing your guitar and then making it louder. Um, it sounds like cranked power amp kind of compression and I really like it. So with that, I've got a slightly over 12 o'clock setting on the bloom setting, which is compression more or less. A little bit of tilt EQ on the tone just to brighten up the sound a little bit, but the level is the main attraction here because instead of boosting the volume like I might in other applications, I'm actually rolling it off a lot. So when this pedal is 
activate it, it not only compresses the guitar, but it doesn't drive the front end as hard. So you get a smoother, compressed, clean sound, which brings this back from being, you know, kind of that edge of breakup to, oh, this is nice and clean and especially reacts well if you do a volume roll off. You could replace this with a regular compressor. You can even do a regular EQ pedal and just lower the volume or, you know, play with the volume roll off if you like doing that. But I prefer to have a particular pedal that does the same sound every time. And I just really like the results of this. So um, that's kind of my trick. If you'd rather go the opposite way and use a clean pedal platform, then you may not need this and would like to replace this with a different drive pedal. But this is the way I prefer to do it because it still sounds, again, undeniably British, but just not quite as driven. The next pedal has been my most recent stomp box obsession with the TC Electronic Classic Booster Plus Distortion. This is the reissue of the Classic Line Driver Plus Booster and Distortion. And this thing is just a mid-range boosting monster. It sounds great. It does vintage wonderfully. It does, you know, extended range guitar, metal boosting wonderfully. It's just so hard to mess up. And that's what I love about it. So the way I have this dialed in, I'm bypassing the distortion mode entirely. I've got the output level just barely over noon. What happens here is you get some light square wave kind of distortion. It's very soft clipping and it sounds musical, but has a sort of compressed thing going on as well. And with the tone stack with bass rolled off almost completely in treble, just a little bit below noon, you get a very musical mid hump that sounds more like a studio parametric EQ than you might associate with other guitar pedals. It sounds awesome. That plus the boost level drives the front end of this amplifier hard enough that it sounds more like a jumpered plexi than it does just a normal channel. And that's what I really like about this pedal is it, it kind of is like a channel changer, but because of the way it EQs your guitar, everything still stays articulate. You know, there's no flubby low end, there's no ice picky high frequencies. Because of the rarity of this pedal, this is something you could absolutely swap out with your favorite clean boost or preamp or even graphic EQ for that matter. Just dial it in to have this same sort of effect and I think you'll be happy with the results. The final gain stage of sorts would be the Full Tone OCD, another pedal I've been really obsessed with here recently. This is one that Onofre gave to me when he shipped my custom guitar over about half a year ago at this point, um, had to repair it. and. Since I got it back, it's been absolutely lovely. This is one of the few pedals out there that I think truly deserves the overdrive title because it's exactly what it does. It's not just a boring clipping diode tube screamer clone that sounds more like static than it really does true distortion. Um, this sounds like amplifier distortion. It uses solid state, you know, JFETs um, with field effect transistors. So. Obviously, you're getting some of that quality in there, but the way it distorts the waveforms itself looks like just a smoother version of a high gain Marshall. It's pretty cool. And when you stack that with a low input British sound, then it still sounds like the same amp. That's what I love about this. It's so transparent and not in the marketing transparent buzzword way. But when you use this with a similarly voiced amp, it's just like adding another um, channel to it in a way, especially when you use this LP switch which kind of tames the high end and makes it more round and vintage sounding. So the way I have it set, I got a decent amount of volume boost, a little past noon, that's actually a lot of volume on this pedal. Drive is about 10.30, 10 o'clock, something like that, which is, again, I'm just trying to push past the little distortion I already have here. And then tone is about at one o'clock.
Using these pedals one at a time is of course pretty cool, but the best aspects of this rig surface when you stack these pedals. So let's say you turn on the classic booster and the OCD at the same time, you're into boosted JCM 800 modern high gain kind of sound or especially, you know, 80s thrash hair metal kind of stuff. Sounds great that way. Again, if you use active pickups, if you've been using passives before, then you get that much more of a level boost. If you turn on the compressor going into the OCD, then you get just a slightly reduced gain sound that sits somewhere between it being on and off. If you stack all three at the same time, then it's kind of a volume roll off thing. There's just so many different tones to be had here and um, definitely experiment depending on whatever pedals you have. But when you do that, you'll definitely want to revisit your EQ settings on the amp, on the pedals themselves and find something that works well with any combination of them or at least the ones that you plan on using. Uh, my favorites are no pedals, amp plus compressor, amp plus drive pedal or boost pedal here, amp plus overdrive pedal, these two on and all three on. My post distortion signal chain is rather simple. It starts off with the Boss MD500, which is a studio quality modulation effect through and through. I'm not taking nearly full advantage of it here. This is a glorified tremolo and Roland Dimension sound. In this use case, I'm not using them together at any point, so the order doesn't matter, but you might you know, have a particular preference there. I'm using those because the Dimension's like the best chorus sound ever, in my opinion and it plays really well with going into front of amps, even on moderately distorted sound. So use it on a clean tone, it's lush, rich sort of chorus, then you put it on, you know, mid gain Marshall drive settings then uh, sound like Rush. So definitely no complaints there. Tremolo is hard to screw up and um, it's a good effect for, for certain songs. That goes into the Boss DD7 digital delay, which I have as a glorified analog thing, tap tempo. And this is an interesting effect when you put it in front of a higher gain amp as the amplifier sort of limits this out where you can't hear the delay nearly as much when you're playing. And then when you back off, the echo is very prominent. And I think this is really nice. This is actually an effect I, I like and I think it'd be useful um, where you know it's, it's a little bit more dummy proof. And if you're soloing with a band, then you're not gonna get covered up with echoes that may not be perfectly on time. So um, I actually do enjoy that aspect of this front of the amp setup. Lastly, I end off with the staple Boss RV5 digital reverb set to plate, since it sort of works for everything. It's kind of roomy, it's kind of springy. And again, when you put it in front of a moderately driven amplifier, especially if something compressed before it, it has a diffused kind of sound that I really like that sounds more like a onboard reverb tank than you would think would come out of a digital reverb sound. Um, so all that combined, you can get some really cool washed out stuff that you might not otherwise be able to achieve in an effects loop, but you can definitely get in trouble with it. So just be conscious of how you use it. I find the subtle effects to be, you know, more up my alley, but um, depending on how you stack it, you can still get some really cool big solo sounds if that's what you're looking for.
That pretty much covers it for my setup. Again, you're free to try out different combinations of your own stomp boxes. If you do use vintage pedals like a fuzz or treble booster or even older wah designs that uh, have low impedance, then you might have to get creative and figure out what sounds best where and especially, you know, be careful about where you put buffers and especially wireless systems if you're um, gigging or anything like that. But the same sort of gain stage philosophy will apply across the board no matter if you're using an amp like this or something completely different. Um, with that, I really have enjoyed this little pedal platform experiment thing because I'm very um, pragmatic when it comes to pedal use. I pick something because it does that sound or it solves that problem. I've not really been one for just twisting knobs to experiment to see what happens since I was you know, just starting playing guitar when I knew absolutely nothing about effects and was just messing around for the fun of it. But uh, this kind of brings that back a little bit and uh, I miss it. So hopefully it'll be more of a common theme as uh, this series progresses. But with that, any other questions, comments, suggestions, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.